Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode 74. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Daniel Anthony. Hello, Norman. Hey, Daniel, how are you? I would actually like to ask you a question because that's more relevant in this case. Oh, really now? How so? How was your day? I heard you went down to Singapore. Uh, it was fun. It was tiring. It was... Uh, it was eventful. It was eventful. Awesome, awesome. And well, yeah, my day was just average. Really? For the guy who won a gold medal in Bali... I won a gold medal last week. Well, still, you weren't on last week. You were the guy who's having a holiday on the beach and boasting about it. Okay, fine. You know what? I should let you edit this show, just for punishment. <laughs> I don't mind. Uh, maybe later then. But anyway, we have a guest this week, and our guest is Twitch. He's a Microsoft Flight Simulator repainter. He basically reskins plane to make them more ponies. Is that true? That's what I did. Alright, so how are you, Twitch? How are you? I'm fine, thank you very much. Had a pleasant day today. Ooh, can you share it with us? Like, did you have any good food, something like that? Oh, no, not really, but I really enjoyed myself today uh, with um, seven hours of playing uh, on Flight Simulator. Oh, seven, seven hours. Seven hours, wow. So yeah. basically, you did a real flight thing where you wanted to fly from wherever you are to Bronicon? <laughs> Oh, yes, definitely. Uh, in real time. Oh, everybody so wants to be in Bronicon now. You went to Baltimore International? Uh, actually, I went from Yelizovo, Kamchatka Oblast, up in Russia, down back to uh, Oh, wow. Sounds like fun. All in a day's work. <laughs> yep, yep. Okay, so anyway, before we start the show, we need to ask you the four basic questions. And question number one is, who is your favorite character? My favorite from the show, at least uh, from what episode depicts, would be Applejack. Oh, Applejack. That's a rare one. Why Applejack? Because I really love her character, and uh, I find her to be the most stable one, uh, and the most tolerable one if you were to spend time or to live with her. <laughs> <laughs> understandable, understandable. And what about your favorite episode? My favorite episode, uh, I don't really have, because... Most of them are really good, which is hard to tell. No, but if you're saying... Let, let's just say that the one that you're thinking of now... Uh, the one I'm thinking of now would be uh, the Sonic Rainbow episode. Hmm, that is a good episode. I mean, um, a lot of... Well, from what I heard, a lot of people went into that episode thinking that I have started on a slope that I can never go out. Slippery slope. Indeed. Uh, that's a good answer, that's a good answer. And how did you become a fan of the show? I became when I sort of looked up on the internet and you know how there's a meme website everywhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just saw a, a short clips or thumbnails of the show on some of the, uh, some of the comics. Ah, so you went to those meme sites and you got hooked like that, really? Yeah, basically that's what uh, led me. Uh, basically, I just... I, so, uh, I saw those clips on the show. I got interested and, and uh, hooked me up. So basically, you wanted to know what does this original clip means then? Something like that? Uh, not really. It basically, it was a rage comic panel that involved, uh, that was included, you know, a few pony vectors. And so I got interested. What are these uh, candy colored packs of horses doing here? And uh, I into a little bit of research and found that it's quite interesting that a show like this has the demographic it has right now. So I looked into it and uh, got into more research and then I finally viewed uh, a couple of episodes just to, just to uh, see why bronies at the show uh, from their point of view and I became one of myself. <laughs> That's an awesome story. So how what do your family and friends think about your love for the show? Well, um, as for family and friends, only a few family members know that I'm into the show right now, uh, which is uh, my mother, most notably. She, um, in it, she had a little bit of, um, uh, well, she was inquired, she inquired me about uh, the reason why and uh, things 
things like that because it's very unusual for, for a, uh, a boy or a man to view something like this. So she was a bit at first, uh, but uh, in the end, I, sh I showed the, uh, the MOP episodes to her. I uh, showed the subculture and some of the memes, and uh, she got the idea, she got the message, and uh, basically, right, she's, uh, her acceptance is, is showing through. Wow. As for the others, they don't really know uh, that I watch the show, but as for friends, uh, most of them know. And uh, for the friends I go to, uh, my schoolmates, they are totally fine with it. Uh, for internet friends, uh, I've got super brony friends, but for the ones who aren't, I try not to mention MLP in front of them because uh, it's not that they don't like it, but uh, there's no sense in pushing it. They sort of, they sort of get annoyed when uh, uh, police start flooding the internet and such. Uh, understandable, understandable. Okay, that's cool, that's cool. Thanks for sharing your story for us. Okay, anyway, let's move on to the next topic, which is housekeeping. I don't have any. What about you, Dan? Uh, well, as you heard earlier at the beginning part of the show, my choir brought back gold for Malaysia, so yay. Awesome, awesome. Congratulations. Yeah, that's the reason why I wasn't here for last week's episode. Me and my choir, we were in Bali competing. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> competing was oh, I done. Did, I didn't get a gold medal by sitting on a beach, boy. <laughs> but that's what you say. Your tournament was not on the Saturday of course not. Does yeah. anything on Saturday? Saturdays for shows, yeah. right? Indeed. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. anyway, let's move on to the real next topic. And did I say I was done? <laughs> oh, sorry. I uh, no. Anyway, one more thing in housekeeping is um, a big, big. Actually, this is not. This is both a housekeeping and a shout out to of our previous guests, Forrest Drain and Rebecca Starborn. Congratulations to you two for that awesome proposal at Brody Palooza. Uh, yesterday night it's this morning our time here so <laughs> congratulations anyway forget about dates true time zones we believe wobbly yep indeed congratulations you two I'll guess I'll try to get you on and you can talk about it <laughs> yeah indeed, indeed anyway let's move on to the real next topic and in the next topic is news time and in today's news time get your exclusive vinyl figure from Wheel of Fine so episodes ago, we mentioned that you can get an exclusive derpy vinyl figure from Wheel of Fine at the San Diego Comic Con. Now they have an offer for online purchases. With any purchases of two MLP items, you are entitled to buy a DJ Pontree figure. Links can be found in the show notes. So guys, um, have you ever bought anything from Wheel of Fine? <laughs> I prefer not to go in that direction. Oh, you... You have, but haven't done any time recently. I'm a freeloader. Oh, you. Uh, well, you could just help Charlie with his purchase. <laughs> uh, so anyway, um, what about you, Twitch? Have you? Uh, uh, merchandise? Yeah. Well, I wish to purchase some. Uh, it's a bit... Well, it's a bit far off over here. They produce them over here, but they don't sell them. <laughs> oh, God. I know the feeling. I know the feeling. I know the feeling. But, uh... Yeah. There's little figurine shipping out the factory, but they're well out of your grasp. <sighs> that is so true. I can feel you, bro. No, but honestly speaking, this Wheel of Fine figure from... Well, actually, this final scratch figure from Wheel of Fine is really cool. Um, if you can get it, do get it, because I don't think there's a limit here. Well, well, There's a perfect shop in the world that's Wheel of Fine. They have not made any mistake by far in my whole history of knowing what they've done. Mm, true indeed, true indeed. Oh, um, I need I need to mention that goods are limited to t-shirts, hoodies, bags, and art prints. So, yeah, MLP items only and those items only. So, yeah, if you want to get them, get them now. I don't think there's a limit, so do buy them. It's really awesome. Anyway, moving on to the next topic. Dan. Yes, sir. And now, coming to you live from Kuala Lumpur, because I wasn't there, Hasbro Singapore throws a party for International Friendship Day. And yesterday I learned there was such a thing as Friendship Day. If you don't know, the first Sunday of August is known as International Friendship Day, and Hasbro Singapore held an awesome event. People were encouraged to wear any MLP-related swag and costumes, and the first thousand people who came got exclusive goodies from Hasbro. You can find pictures in the show notes. So, Norman, since you were there, care to enlighten us on how it was? Well, it was pretty amazing, really. Like... Uh, the event started a bit late, but uh, it wasn't that bad. It was fun. It was fun. There were cosplayers there. They hand out blind bag ponies, which I think this is the first time you can get blind bag pony in Asia. Unless you're in China where you can get in the factory, but we're not talking about that. 
<laughs> and we're not going to talk about that. But it's no. close enough. Yes, true. But no, we're going to talk about that. But I think now you can get blind bag ponies in Asia. It's cool. And they and were it's free. Yeah, they were handing out for all the people who attended the event. And um, I saw a lot of people, including parents with their child. And I saw this one brony dad with his daughter, which is cool. Oh, brony dads in Asia. Yeah, it was really cool. It was really cool. And got to talk to a lot of awesome guys over there. Guys and girls. Believe it or not, they were girls over there. We have a girl on the show crew. What are you talking about? Well, people say that brony girls don't exist. <laughs> and judging from this show, we haven't heard from that girl in a while. Well, Tasha, if you hear this, you have the right... You, you can redeem a voucher to go and give normal one tight slide next time you see him. And it's coming up to KL real soon, so yeah. Oh, you... You don't have that vulture, girl, if you're not on the show. Surely you mean Pegasus, though. Oh, God, no. But anyway, uh, it was fun, it was fun. I, I think I might do a report on it and post it on EQD or something like that. Let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is TV Guide says good thing about bronies. In a recent article by TV Guide, they have written a very positive article outlook on the brony fandom. The article covers the humble beginning of the brony fandom to its many charity projects and its fan-created content. The article also touched on the corporate level where Hasbro has been working with their license to create merchandise for the brony fandom. Links can be found in the show notes. So, wow, positive feedback from corporate or a corporate company. This is good. Oh. <laughs> what? It's about time. Oi, you don't seem happy about it. I mean, it's like we're on, we're into three seasons and finally TV Tropes says something about us. Well, at least better late than never. Oh, TV Guide, sorry, TV Tropes has done it already. Yeah, yeah it's better late than never. I mean, I mean, when I, when I heard the title, it was like, give bronies a break in defense of ML, MLP fans. I'm like, were we under attack in the first place? We were always under attack in the first place. Okay. But anyway, Twitch, what do you think? Like, have you read the article? Not really, but... Uh... Uh, I have seen bits and pieces of it, and I think uh, it's excellent because, yeah, you know, uh, along recent times, we've seen more and more positive feedback from uh, from art uh, with articles and TV shows. You know, a bit more on the positive side instead of uh, just sort of making fun of us uh, back uh, in the uh, old days, or not in the old days, but back uh, a year or two ago. Oh yes, true, true. But I don't know when I read this, it was huh. This is really good. They touch about the adult content the fandom likes to do, but hey, what other fandom doesn't do that? Um, flight simulator fandom? Oh god, there's stories about it. <laughs> Fanfic stories about the flights. <laughs> but anyway, that's an interesting segue. I think I'll just cut that one out because it's so bad. <laughs> anyway, that was the news. Oh, Boy, was this week so slow. <laughs> anyway, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is guest time. And our guest is Twitch. Like I mentioned before, he's an MS Flight Simulator remodeler, recolor. I got no idea. Repainter. Oh. Yes, repainter. Anyway, Twitch, how are you? Having fun yet? Uh, I'm fine, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, mind telling the people who might not know who you are and what you do? Uh, my name is uh, Twitch, known as Adam the internet my call sign twitchy and uh what i basically do is i repaint ssx aircraft and put ponies on top Ooh, that's cool i i've seen some of your work and it got me thinking was this real or was this some kind of remodel painting <laughs> no it's a paint that's what's called a repaint you know like a repaint like a real thing like what they do with in japan with um the japanese airline eia i forgot oh, yeah yes with the Pokemon so, things. What do you think he did? He painted a plane, threw it in the air, and he used a fast camera to take a picture. I think so. It looks, it looks legit. But it is the modern day internet and stuff. But anyway, Dan, you found this guest. Why don't you um, conduct the interview? Yeah, no problem. So, Faye, which came <laughs> first? Did you get into Flight Simulator or did you get into Ponies first? Oh, I got into Flight Simulator first. I uh, got into it around seven years ago. Wow. And ponies were uh, around a year and a half. Okay. So, how did you, you know, make a connection between the two? Because, I don't know, I, I, did it come to you immediately that you should, I should put ponies on planes kind of deal, or did you just think of it much later? Well, in the first place, it, um, 
When I was browsing through the internet, I found out that many people own FlightSim, and the uh, FlightSim community is also, is also really large, so that gave me a sort of basis to know that Flight Simulator is quite popular among, among people. So after uh, I became a brony around a year and a half ago, uh, I was uh, going through the internet like usual, and then I saw a, uh, a flight sim page uh, next to, well, actually it was Facebook, and I saw a flight sim group uh, posting something, and a pony group below. And so it sparked the idea, what if I put ponies on planes? I'm sure there are lots of ponies who play flight sim, and so I did. And I uh, completed the first point, which is, uh, okay. yeah, which is a Robinson R-22 helicopter. And that got me going. Which was your first repaint that involved ponies? Can uh, you share a link with us? One, the first one was actually for a friend. Now he pretty much of a brony, but he uh, browsed the internet and he found out the Fluttershy one day and decided that he loved it. So I uh, pulled out the Robinson R22 because it's, it's a lightweight helicopter, a bit weak, but uh, it's slow and steady, so it, uh, it matches her personality. So I uh, painted it on top just as an experiment at the app farm and I uh, gave it to my friends as a present. Ooh, okay. Wow, somebody got a helicopter from you as a birthday present. That's amazing. Hi, Twitch, what'd you get me for my birthday? Helicopter! <laughs> <laughs> and it's got ponies on it. Yellow and pink. Yeah, that's basically how it started. And uh, I found out it was quite to uh, work out the paints and to uh, put them to, to actually morph them onto the aircraft. So it really got me going and I began to paint other things like Cessnas and such. And uh, for a while I kept it uh, in my personal library, but in the end, uh, well, I posted it on Facebook and uh, got quite positive feedback. So I opened up the Deviant Art account and then I uploaded it to the account and uh, yeah, it just branched out from there on. Okay, so uh, how, how, did you start repainting aircraft before you were Brony as well? Uh, no, actually, I have not. It is, uh, Brony's really inspired me to, to repaint in the first place. So um, I, 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 I suppose that, you know, probably your collection of planes in your computer has much, much more repaints than your DeviantArt? Um, yeah, actually, definitely, a lot more. Okay, so um, just a curious question on how you choose your planes, you know, there's such a big library, there's helicopters, there's, you know, propellers, I don't know what, turboprops, and there's big jumbo jets. How do you choose your planes that you want to paint? Planes that I paint, it really depends on the flight characteristics and how I can fit it to the character I want to paint, and uh, it's, it's optimal. It's optimal if I, if I uh, paint on a freeware aircraft or a default aircraft to you don't have to download so many things and install, you know, just for convenience and such. And, uh, yeah, I'm beginning to run out of default planes to paint on, but, uh, yeah, that's basically how it goes. I find an aircraft uh, that matches the, the, where the flight characteristic matches the personality of the character in the show, and then I begin painting. Okay, so what do you mean by personality? Like, I never knew planes had some sort of personality in that sense. Uh, look, for example, I would take the Robinson R-22, just the first thing. Uh, it's a counter. It's lightweight, very basic, and it can't fly very fast. It's not very nimble either, so you can say it barely flies. And, uh, yeah, just two matches that Fluttershy. Oh, okay. And uh, another example would be uh, having the C-172 SP, the student mm -hmm. part version. Uh, that aircraft is very basic, very standard, and it is uh, one of the most popular planes on the planet, and it is also the most popular uh, instructor aircraft. So, uh, almost every pilot on the world, in the world, who can right now have trained on the Cessna 172. So that that gives the 172 a sort of uh, personality of being knowledgeable and full of, full of knowledge and, and to teach people when I fit Twilight. Oh, I thought you'd probably put it in Cheerilee or something. Oh, well, not really. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, Norman, do you have any questions? None that I can think of right now because I got no idea about MS Flight Simulator. The previous one I played was just fun and I picked the fighter jet so I can just fly around. Okay. 
don't worry, that's how everyone starts. True, but that was way back I'm when. The, see, I'm the weird guy again. When I started, I wanted a passenger jet. I don't know why. Sorry? Not really weird, but, uh, well, common, but not really weird. I know what you mean. New people would just get flights and uh, spin around in a fighter jet or whatever. I mean, I got Microsoft Flight and then I was like an Icon A5. I was like, really? Can I have a big, big, big plane? So I want, I just made a beeline for the A350 when I got Plus Simulator X. <laughs> um, so, do you have a favorite aircraft in that sense? Um, well, my favorite, uh, it depends on what type of aircraft, but in general, it would be the 737 new generation. Because it's a medium sized airplane. It's wonderful to fly, and uh, the cockpit is very, uh, it's not really spacious, but it's very versatile, and very flexible, you can control, uh, you have a lot of control over the aircraft systems, as opposed to an Airbus, where many of the things are automated, and what's more, the 737 isn't overly complicated, and it's not overly enormous, like the uh, 747 Jumbo Jet, so uh, yeah, it, it became my favorite aircraft. So, you said that you played the flight sim on the PC, right? Yeah. So, how do you play it? Keyboard and mouse or flight stick? Uh, the, ver- the version I play is the uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. And when I started off, yes, it flew with a mouse and keyboard. But then, uh, as my interest in the issue grew on, uh, I got myself a flight system, including a joystick, throttle, and rudder pedals. Oh. And that soon grew. And now I also have an MCP, a manual control panel, uh, basically a, uh, a piece of hardware that lets you control the autopilot systems and also track IR, a uh, tracking device. That is so awesome! Like, it, all this, okay, um, where do you get this all, where do you get this thing? Because to me, I'm just thinking like, huh, this is kind of hardware where it's kind of hard to get, even like, um, with the fly, flying games, with the Ace Combat for the Xbox 360 or the PlayStation 3, they don't have any hardware for them. Like, Consoles uh, don't generally have these kind of things, do they? Yeah, I don't know. Well, it's it's kind of a... I, I'm, I'm thinking like Flight Sim or Flight Battle games, those kind of games are a dying trend. And for you to get all those items, like, wow, where do you find them? Well, peripherals are rather rare for consoles, so I wouldn't be surprised. But for PC, there are a lot of them out there. And, of course, most of them are sold in the USA. Huh. But uh, the city where I'm from, uh, Hong Kong, we we are sort of at the brink of technology, at the front line of it. So we have several computer marketers here, and they sell different uh, hardware and gadgets in the computer market. And that's where I get most of them. Oh, okay, so you can... I need to go to Hong Kong now. <laughs> so basically, you can get them locally then? Uh, yes, I can. I just need to uh, walk down to the market and start browsing around. Awesome. So, how for your whole setup that you mentioned just now, how much does it cost? Well, I'm not sure how it uh, converts to currency over there, but I'll try to round it up in uh, US dollars. Oh, please do, please do. Well, for peripherals on their own... I think I have around 1,150 US dollars worth of it. Wow. And for all the systems, including computers and the monitor and such, I think it totals up to around, uh, oh, I'd say around 2,000 US dollars. That is a very powerful machine. And for peripherals, wow. Talk about hardcore gaming. You there, sir, are hardcore enough for enjoying this kind of game. I okay. clap for you, but that would but, destroy the sound quality, so no. But actually, I look, I look at it this way. Do you consider Flight Sim a game? Yeah, the thing is... Um, in a sense, no. Because um, with a lot of people, uh, I take Flight Sim quite seriously. And it's, uh, it's especially true over here, because you can't really afford to, to up, uh, in an aircraft yourself. So you're only left with the option of flying at home in your personal PC. So I really take flight sim quite seriously, and uh, in the sort of level that um, realism is first, fun is second. Mm-hmm. Well, ah. you could also say that for people who are playing Gran Turismo Five on the PlayStation Three. Well, it's five or is it six? I forgot the 
numbers. But anyway, you could also say that for people who are playing Gran Turismo on the PS3, they also buy their steering wheel, they buy the bucket seats, they buy, well, basically they buy the whole setup just to play one game, which is yeah. Gran Turismo. And I, mean, I would do that. I would probably do that. I mean, it's cheaper than buying a Ferrari, a Lamborghini, and a Mercedes Benz and putting it in my house. So, true. Yeah, that's the next best thing. Yeah, true. But I don't know. I mean, uh, different stroke for different people, I guess. Just to uh, elaborate on that point, uh, uh, flight sim to me is to. It's really a big deal, such a level that flight sim it comes out of the box, fifteen gigabytes, and uh, my flight sim, my flight sim has totaled to around eight hundred gigabytes by now. Wow, that's almost one tera. Oh my he, goodness. He flies in an almost a real world. He has texture packs for the countries. You land at an airport. That's the real deal. You land at actual airports. It's not like a fake, oh, runway in the middle of this big plot of land. Yay, let me land there. Of course, it's so controversial that uh, flight isn't really reality because you can't really simulate uh, uh, turbulent conditions or uh, G-forces and forces as a whole. I mean, it's still a simulator on a computer. True, but, true. Uh, yeah, we try to take it to, to the top, to the edge. Yeah, I can yeah. understand, I can understand. It's basically if you're seated on a plane, you basically know what to do. But I think the experience of flying a, well, let's just say a plane is much more fun because you can feel the vibrations, you can feel the humming of the engines, you can oh, feel... Yes, of course. Oh. Yeah. Actually, that is almost reproduced in those industrial standard flight simulators with hydraulics. You know, but still... It's, it's closer to the real deal. Of course, the real plane is still the real... Yeah, but still, I, I, I can understand where Twitch is going because I too kind of feel that way when I'm playing... Well, I wouldn't say playing, but uh, for me, it's playing some of my games. If I'm playing a racing car game, I would really like it if it were real. So when oh, I... Oh, hell you know. no, man. Somebody oh. puts me in the car at 300 kilometers an hour, I will shit my pants. Uh, I, I, I can understand. I can understand. It's, well, like I said, different stroke for different people. Yeah, well, maybe. Maybe that's why I can't take roller coasters. <laughs> QED. <laughs> Uh, for your information, they dragged me onto a roller coaster and I went down there to see Norman. It's kind of torture I get for visiting him. <laughs> oh, the next time you're gonna do, we're gonna do it again. We're gonna do a water park next time. Oh yes, we're gonna do it again. But anyway, Dan, any questions? Yes. Uh, so, hey, are you a member of any virtual airlines by any chance? Uh, not really. Uh, virtual airlines, no. I am a part of what well, used to be a part of F6 Fleet, which is a uh, virtual military organization in Flight Simulator, but in the end, I, uh, I dropped out uh, and got discharged because um, the time zones didn't really match. I'm over here in Asia, and the group is based off in America, so uh. we didn't really organize sessions together, and also it was military. Uh, I didn't realize it was at first. I simply applied, but in, in, when I found out that it was actually a military organization, I sort of backed out. Not that uh, I dislike military things uh, in general, but I feel that um, I would rather sit in a passenger kit and uh, stare at the instruments for seven, eight hours rather than spinning around in the sky in a multi billion dollar jet fighter aircraft. Uh, <laughs> understandable, understandable. Yep. And right now, as of current, I am in a group called the FSX Security Microsaders. It is started by a brony from Canada and uh, it is a uh, half military organization. We fly military aircraft, but we also do it just for fun, so it's nothing serious. Uh, you can check out the, uh, you can check it out by Googling FSX Security Microsaders. Yeah, doing it right now. Right. Uh, but yeah, uh, so the group is rather small and young and it's still developing. Mm. So, yeah, but I am having plans on, uh, if I recruit enough people, I might start a virtual airline called uh, Air Luna from the paints I've made so far. Yeah, Air Luna is an amazing plane. I downloaded it and tried it out on the PMDG and I'm like, the rail is of this, and this thing is over 9,000. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that sounds cool. So how how big yeah, is the PMDG is an industrial standard? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong. Twitch, the PMDG is an industrial standard simulation plugin, right? Uh, well, not really industrial standard. It was never approved, and uh, I don't think it will get approved. But it's as close as reality as you can get with 
Microsoft Life Simulator. Okay. Hmm. So, how big is the current community, like it, as a whole, with the flight simulator brony groups? How how big is it? Well, it's not really big at all if you are counting uh, brony specific flight simulator groups. So far on the internet, I found one failed brony flight simulator group, and current one. Was that flying brony? Uh, I I'm not sure I remember its name, but. Um, I think it was started a while back, but then they started to uh, degrade it and finally they abandoned it. So the oh. only current active one I've found so far, uh, I'm not sure if it's true that it is the only one, but for now, uh, for what I've seen, so far only the FSX King Microsavers is the only active group, the Brony Flight Simulator. I found FSX, uh, I found the, the flying bronies. Actually, it didn't really launch. They were going to do a virtual airline as well for bronies, but it did take off. Oh, really? On DVNR? Uh, no, it was actually on Derby Who's News. Oh, oh yes, that's one I, uh, I found a while back as well. But yeah, I think they failed and it uh, dropped down. I mean, I don't think they even took off in the first place because I think they were saying they were planning it. No, no pun intended, but uh, they didn't really go ahead. Right. How about the future of your flight simulation and, of course... Since you're an avid brony as well, what do you think you might be doing next in Flight Simulator that will be related to the ponies? Uh, I'm not really sure because um, I don't really have any uh, obvious plans for right now, but I do have a short personal project that I'm working right now. I'm hoping to uh, to make a video or make several videos of uh, showcasing the, the readings with selected soundtracks and putting them onto YouTube. Hopefully that will attract more uh, attention and uh, more people to, um, to be able to build up an actual functioning Bronies land. I never really wondered if this was true, but since, of course, we went to the topic of realism, is it possible to swap the world of FSX to fly in Equestria? Um, as of now, uh, not really, because it would take a lot of work, and Flight Simulator is based off the world as a whole. So um, when you spawn in, you don't really spawn in a map or anything. You spawn on Earth, so it's an entire Earth. So it would be rather difficult to convert it and uh, convert the land classes and the game files to match the equestrian terrain. And it would be the problem of creating models and uh, to insert them into the world. And of course, there are resource problems. Because Flight Simulator is an extremely CPU-intensive game, and uh, if you put a lot of 3D objects in, it would burn out your computer. Okay. I see, because I, I thought of that, like, probably a next big thing for a question that was, uh, sorry, for Bronies, in a sense. There's this other Pegasus Flight Simulator game that was coming out, oh, I can't remember where yeah. it was. I would, I, I am interested to see what would come of it, and uh, if possible, if... Uh, put the question to in flight simulator but uh, as of now it's not real feasible oh why not why do you say so and resources and limitations as a whole but I am interested to see uh, I, I am interested to see if something like that will come around okay so um, other than flight simulator 10 which other flight simulators do you use uh, well I don't really use other flight simulators frequently, although I have tried x 9, x 10, Microsoft Flight, and uh, Aeroflight FS, and also the um, uh, uh, the freeware simulator. Flight Gear, I, yeah. I, yes, yes. Flight Gear is scary. <laughs> but yeah, so far, um, if you're starting out to plan in what type of flight, it would be, uh, you would have to do research because different flight simulators have their different characteristics. Uh, but as to now, X-10 and Flight Simulator X dominate the market. If you're looking for something that has good graphics, definitely go for uh, Flight Simulator X, because uh, Flight Simulator X has a good balance between graphics and realism. x Plane is quite realistic, and it uses a separate, uh, a, a unique system that calculates the airflow instead of just looking it up in a table, like how Flight Sim does. Flight Sim uh, has a file from the aircraft, reads it, and determines how much coefficient should be added uh, by determining uh, what speed and weather conditions and whatnot. But X-Plane actually calculates it dynamically, 
So this is oh. very, very cool. But uh, the down point is, is the graphics would need a lot of work. But for both of these simulators, there are a lot of add-ons you can purchase on the market, uh, both freeware and payware of varying pieces and quality. Uh, so you can check it out. Uh, for example, for Flight Simulator X, uh, if you have enough money, uh, if you have enough, you can spend it to make it uh, quite realistic and sometimes uh, as close to X-Plane. Um, and the same X-Plane you can purchase add-ons, so it looks quite almost as nice as Flight Simulator X. Um, but if you're not really in that much into uh, hardcore flying or hardcore simming, if you want to just fly around for fun in general, and you want amazing and beautiful scenery, lovely graphics, then you should go for something called Aerofly FS. It is a uh, simulator which is available on Steam, and um, it is a VFR simulator, so there are no complex systems you have to take care of. The controls are simple, and uh, the, the graphics are just breathtaking. But the uh, draw is, of course, there are almost no systems on the aircraft, and cockpit is not... So it's just your yoke is all you have? Yes. All you do is to, uh, to go up there and uh, fly around. Uh, the, yeah, the upside, you don't have to deal with uh, complicated systems. The downside, you don't have complicated systems to help you out. Okay. Strength is also its weakness. Oh, and also, um, from now... What I've seen, only Flight Simulator X has Brony Reapings for Brony Reapings. So that's oh, okay. the side of I thought you said you knew some other Bronies who fly in X-Plane. They've never repainted oh, yeah. the X-Plane stuff? Uh, they have painted X-Plane. Uh, and I, uh, well, as of now, I've only seen one person uh, paint on X-Plane. And uh, his paints are, quite frankly, uh, a bit simple. Uh, so, yeah, it, it really uh, a lot more choices uh, with FSX to have a lot more collection of the things up there. You've got the Wonderbolts, you've got Rarity, Applejack, and, uh, and whatnot. But uh, for X-Plane, you will only have, from what I've seen, you will only have the Delta Airline 757 with the Rarity and Cutie Mark on it. So that's something ah, so any new uh, paints that you're working on that you'd like to share with us? Uh, currently, I'm working on... T- uh, one of them is the Air Luna retro version, and the other one is the uh, Agro Bell. The so first one, the Air, the Stag Bell. Oh, okay. um, yeah. The first one, the seven three seven seven hundred, is um, a remake of Air Luna, but in a retro version. So it, I tried to get it to look like an easy airline and to make it like an old or scratched off uh, kind of aircraft. So yeah, the paint right now is coming along smoothly. I just need to do a little bit of adjustment. But um, it looks really nice and really old and dirty, so it really gives you a good feel that the aircraft is is very old and has some age to it. And uh, it's also uh, it, it's also registered to the Soviet Union because the Air Luna aircraft uses a Russian registration. And back in the 80s, Russia was was the Soviet Union, so I adopted the uh, Soviet uh, the Soviet um, aircraft registration for it. All the feedback. Actually, uh, actually, a curious question is why did you like probably paint up an Antonov or something to go with the Russian feel? Uh, well, actually, um, I picked the, uh, the aircraft registrations by random, so I don't really think through it. Uh, oh, uh, okay. I see. So yeah, it, it's really randomized. I just look up on Wikipedia and see uh, what type of aircraft registration should I do today. I'll pick a British one. So I put the British one on the Stagger Bell, uh, and I put the Russian one on Air Luna, and then when I'm making the retro paint, I put the Soviet one on. And, oh, uh, okay. So as with the Stagger Bell, it is a Beechcraft D17 Stagger Wing. And uh, I painted something sweet on top of it. It's a very simple painting, and it's uh, it's ready for download. Ooh, all right. The you mean the decommissioned Air Luna? Uh, no, the uh, stagger belt, the uh, sweet belt on the oh, set. Sorry. So Norman, any more questions you have for our guest? No, I'm at a loss because I, I got no idea. Um, yeah, basically, I got no idea. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm I'm not being professional today. I'm, I'm sorry. No, it's all right. It's all right. 
Now you know how I feel like when you talk to people about video games. Indeed. <laughs> Yay. So we're even. No, actually, this is a video game. I, I should know I should know something, but... Nyeh. No, he's hardcore, so it's not a video game. <laughs> Uh, so, um, great, actually. I was gonna, I was, I was gonna ask you whether you're considering doing aviation, but I know the answer. But you want, would you care to share that with our audience? Uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I you, you probably noticed that I am, I am a huge fan of aviation, and I wish to become an airline transport pilot um, in the future. Doesn't matter what, what type, it uh, doesn't matter carrying passengers or cargo to fly a, uh, a civil jetliner. And uh, I'm heading towards that goal right now, and it's coming steadily. Wow, that's cool. I mean... I've never heard of people starting so early, actually. It's more like aviation might come as an in- interest later. I never knew people actually... I mean, I don't know many, but I think you've got a really good head start already. Like You're, you're 15, right? And you're already yes. piloting a PMG. Uh, 16. Just, 16, uh, just right? 16. Four weeks ago. Oh, okay, happy birthday. Thank you, thank you very much. Well, looks like you have a future, and well, if you do well, maybe um, Air Blue will take you in. Oh, definitely. Oh, and to mention, uh, I also have a, a jet, jet, blue. jet Blue, Jet Blue. Oh, Jet Blue, sorry. <laughs> jet Blue. <laughs> okay, my bad. Uh, I also have a Jet Blue paint, and I'm, uh, I'm rather proud of it. And, uh, yes, I, I can't wait to, to download give- it. I just want to give a shout out to Get Blue. Thank you for being uh, so kind and so nice to us Brunies and uh, being so welcoming, I guess. And uh, Get Blue is an awesome male. So, yeah, maybe someday I'll fly with Awesome. And then you can make a detour to call the to pick us up. <laughs> <Cody Con. laughs> that will remain to, that will have remained to be seen. Oh, looky <laughs> here, Dan abusing his powers. Ooh. And then again, that's why I play flight sim. It's like, if I can't fly to Ronicon, I can't get a plane to take me there. I'll fly myself there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boys. All right. I think so. Um, that's been a great session. So, Norman, if there's nothing else, I think we can move on. Okie dokie dokie then. So, that was our guest Twitch. Sorry that I couldn't contribute more to the conversation, but knowing me and knowing what I know, I would just mess it up. <laughs> We don't know what you know, so never mind. <laughs> uh, you, after a few episodes, you should know me by now. But anyway, um, Twitch... We don't know what you don't know. Put it that way. Hush. Anyway, <laughs> Twitch, where can they find you? Uh, you can contact me uh, on DeviantArt. Um, DeviantArt is Feichung, A-Y-C-H-E-U-N-G, dot DeviantArt.com. Uh, you can also find me on Skype, Feichung730. You can also find me on Steam as Fei and then... Uh, Okie dokie dokie, I'll just add in in the show notes. So anyway, let's move on to shout outs. So my shout out for this week goes to you, Twitch. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you very much for uh, taking me on. No problem, it was a pleasure talking to you. And also, um, a new brony I met today, um, Kitsune Risu. Um, he's a really interesting guy and... Yeah, it really helped me a lot while I was in Singapore. So, thanks a lot, man. And Dan, what about you? Okay, a uh, few shout-outs first of all to uh, Twitch here. And uh, for a very good reason, it's that because a few days ago, Twitch actually had, took a flight with me. We connected our... Well, we tried to connect, but it didn't work. So, we used Skype. And yeah, Adam Savage and Jamie Heinemann can suck on this. Twitch here guided me to land an Airbus A350 over the phone. I don't think so. That's the same, but moving on. It's not the same, but I'm not a pilot, and I know near deal about aviation. And a 15 year old kid, just 16 year old kid, just taught me how to land a plane over the phone, which is achievement unlocked <laughs> for both <Right>. of us. <laughs> I guess it, it, there's the same effect on uh, on some of my friends in the United States when uh, I sort of guide them to land on the aircraft carrier and flights in. They're sort of like, huh, that's strange. A 16-year-old kid, what I was talking about, a 14-year-old kid from China knows how to land a multi-million dollar plane on top of an aircraft carrier of the most powerful uh, most powerful military force on the planet. <laughs> wow, that's... When you say I it that way, when, when you say it that way, that sounds so dangerous. <laughs> oh, yes, I mean, 
Oprah Winfrey said it before, and I shall say it again. No matter how good you are at something, or no matter how good you think you are at something, there is always a kid in China who does it better than you. <laughs> <laughs> We're so talking true. to him. <laughs> so true. And, um, last shout out once again. I can't shout out enough to this brand new engaged couple, Forrest Rain and Rebecca Starborn. Congratulations oh, once yes. again. It really made my day to hear about it this morning. Awesome, awesome. And was... one last one goes out to my choir because yeah, you guys are awesome for bringing back the gold for Malaysia. Cool. So Twitch, what about you? Anybody to shout out to or any corporate company you want to shout out to? Oh yeah, I've got a couple of shout outs I want to do. Uh, first one goes to my friend Daniel Adam Boyer, also a uh, core science guy guy. He's a great friend to talk to, another brony. He's from Texas and uh, he really helps me out projects and helps me to, to deal with difficulties I come upon. So huge shout out to you. Uh, a shout out to um, JetBlue for being such an awesome airline and such an awesome, uh, an awesome company as a whole uh, for being, you know, providing such good service and, and hospitality for us, Baroni. Uh, I want to give a shout out to um, to Forest Rain. Yes, uh, congratulations on the wedding and uh, hope to see you to make good music to, uh, with, with, uh, with your friends. Your wife now, I guess you can call. Uh, and hope you have. It a, was a marriage proposal. Life. They're not married yet. Eh, well, yeah. She said that. yes, so it's kind of well, halfway there. Yeah, halfway. So, yeah, I wish you guys a uh, brilliant, happy life, and also um, a good shout out to your ex destructor, my favorite uh, musician, favorite brony musician, and thank you for being so uh, so kind to all of your subscribers and giving them all the attention they can ever ask for. Cool, awesome, awesome. So anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at nbshow.gmail.com. And if you would like to send us any personal emails, you can reach me at norman at nbshow.com and daniel at the daniel, <laughs> at the daniel, wow. At the daniel, ah! <laughs> anyway, uh, sorry, uh, it's daniel at nbshow.com. And you can also reach us on Twitter. Uh, the show's Twitter account is at the MBS show. Follow them for news on the show, updates on editing, and general mumble stuff. <laughs> I just made a joke there. If anybody general mumble stuff, <laughs> general mumble on the show, and you didn't tell me. No, you know general, like in general and mumbling. You know, like mumbles. So when you put them together, you, you know, it's a bad joke. Moving on, moving on. You can follow me at Norman Sanzo. Follow me to find out stuff that is going on currently with me, what I'm doing, what I'm playing, what I'm eating. But I'm popular with the foods. So just follow me at Norman Sanzo. And Daniel, what about you? Uh, you can follow me at St. Pinky, S-T-P-I-N-K-I-E. Um, was active for a while, not active, and now back on. So yeah, I realize there's nothing good to say on Facebook kids. So <laughs> yeah, it ends up there. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we said last week, if you want to follow disappointment, follow Daniel. <laughs> No, if you no, it's not that. If you want to know that, you know, no matter how that's not a word. Your day is someone here in Kuala Lumpur is having a worse day than you. You follow me. I make you feel better. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. What about you, Twitch? Do you have any Twitters? Uh, well, no, I don't really use Twitter. Uh, okay, it's understandable. It's understandable. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes and Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. Links will be provided in the show notes. Before we end, I, I need to say this because uh, we have a winner for the book contesting game. Oh. So we have a winner and surprisingly enough, um, is one of our past contestants. It's Adeline Choi. Oh, Adeline, congratulations. Yep, congratulations. Um, I'll personally send the book to you and, well, I'm appreciative. I, I, I'm happy right now because you took the time to uh, listen to all four questions and kind of answer the questions that I asked. Thank you so much. And, well, expect your book soonish. Soonish? Yes, soonish. That's a word. People slide you tracking number. No, I'm going to send it personally. <laughs> oh, she's in Penang. No! Anyway. Have um, a nice journey up to the north. I thought she was in KL. Uh, anyway, I'm... You want to fly up? Hush. Anyway, uh, I've been Norman Sanzo. I've been Norman's pilot. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm Daniel Anthony. Bitch. Uh, I've been uh, Twitchy. And we'll see you guys next week. Oh boy. Up, up, and away! <laughs> bye bye! Hey, hey, everybody. We've got something to say. We may seem as.
as different as the night is from day. But you look a little deeper, and you will see that I'm just like you, and you're just like me. Yeah. Hey, hey, everybody, we're here to shout that the magic of friendship is what it's all about. Yeah, we thought we were different as the night is from the day until twilight sparkle. To see another way, so get up, get down. If you're gonna come around, we can work together, helping Twilight win the crowd. So get up, get down, 'cause it's gonna make a sound. If we work together, helping Twilight sparkle win the crown. Hey, hey, hands up now. We're sending a message to the crowd. Hands wave up. Come down, we party together all around. Generous honesty, laughter, kindness, loyalty. Twilight helped us each to see all that we can be. So get up, get down. If you're gonna come around, we can work together, helping Twilight win the crown. So get up, get down, 'cause it's gonna make a sound if we work together, helping Twilight sparkle win the crown. I'm gonna be myself, no matter what I do. And different, different, yeah. I want you to be true to you. If you follow me, we'll put our differences aside. We'll stick together and start working on that school pride. Jump up and make a sound. Stomp your hooves, turn around, start now. Make a change, gonna come around. Jump up and make a sound. Stomp your hooves, turn around. Cancer lot, wonder cults, help her win the crown. Jump up, make a sound. Stomp your hooves, turn around. Start now, make a change. Gonna come around. Jump up, make a sound. Stomp your hooves, turn around. Cancer lot, wonder cults, help her win the crown. Jump up, make a sound. Stomp your hooves, turn around. Start now, make a change. Gonna come around. Jump up, make a sound. Stomp your hooves, turn around. Catch her like wonder cults. Help her win the crown. Uh, Dad, was that four questions? I can't remember. Um, yeah, there was four questions. Yeah, I got hit in the head today, so mm, I don't remember much. Oh, you got hit in the head by who? Uh, by a friend who opened the door. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, but that's not going to be in the show because it's I, like it's still pounding right why now. Why do people have such excite? Why do people have such exciting days? You know. No, that's not exciting. It's painful. I'm not wishing to get hit in the head by a door, but yeah. No. Anyway, moving on to the next news. Three.